Good afternoon, everyone. I, Chandan, on behalf of NEN and Wadwani Foundation, would like to invite you all for this webinar and also introduce to our expert. Ms. Priti is Director at Techno Tech Corp International Consultants PT Limited, Singapore, and partner at Tech Corp Legal LLP, New Delhi. Priti is an IP lawyer, registered patent attorney with the patent office. Tech Corp International Consultant is headquartered in Singapore and is a technology business consulting company that simplifies international business for their clients. They aim to build a dynamic and diverse portfolio of companies and ventures under Technocorp Group, www.technocorpgroup.com. The first venture, Technocorp Capital, represents a new concept conceived by amalgamation of business accelerators and incubators to provide strategic business services to bridge the path between ideas and prototypes. Technocorp Legal LLP is a full spectrum technology and corporate legal consultancy and IP law firm. They serve startups, technology companies for tech transfer, industry associations and startup business entrepreneurs. Here are a few reminders for the audience. You will all be on mute. You may ask questions by typing in the panel provided. Over to you, Ms. Priti. Thank you, Chandan, for a warm welcome. And good afternoon to everyone today. Uh, I would be discussing on importance of IPR for startups. The agenda for today's webinar would be what is IPR all about and relevance of intellectual property for startups. IPR strategies for startups, which includes care and search, technology watch, and competitive intelligence, and the IP mix which many entrepreneurs face in today's world. Firstly, what is intellectual property right all about? Intellectual property rights, it's an intangible asset. It's, it's a work based on ideas, and it doesn't exist in physical world. Although, IPR is of different types. It can be categorized, but they are not financial instruments like cash, bank accounts, bonds, and stocks. They can be valued and owned. It can be transferred by way of assignment deeds and can be monetized. Intellectual property is basically creation of mind. It's a thought process to create something new. It's, it can be a brand name which you coin to start your venture. It can be a technology which you, for which you want to file a patent application and it is something new which nobody has thought till be. And for that you need to protect it uh, from infringers. It's, a, it's unique to your business and it needs IP protection. If, if there's an idea, why not protect it? So great ideas definitely need protection. Protection from competitors, infringers from copying their intellect, creation, and the ideas which any third party can copy. So that is diluting your brand name in that sense. From the investor's point of view, intellectual property is very important. It implements idea into practice to earn profits. When you seek protection, you can you can go a long way. And during evaluation, IP assets owned by the company play a very major role. Ideas can be protected by many types of IP. It depends from business to business what kind of IP is generated in your business. And it's very important to identify your IP. Because if you don't identify what kind of IP your business is generating, so what kind of protection you are going to file for. So broadly, when we talk about uh, today's generation or today's businesses, definitely branding, everybody coins a brand name for their businesses so that a consumer can relate to their brand name. So it is protected by trademarks and in trademarks also you have goods and service industry. Where, when it's a good, you file for a trademark, it's known as key and for the service industry, uh, it's known as SM. And then we have patents. Patents we file for technology, which I'll be discussing further. And copyright is expression of information, which is stamp of author's personality. So, what is the 
advantage of having a protected intellectual property? Definitely, if you have your IP protected, it generates profit and it's a short shot success that your venture would be going long run way. Now, as an entrepreneur or a startup, there are many questions. We get many questions when they start up and they have an idea like how to go about it, what to do about it. So there are so many questions like why should I file for patents? Why should not I file for patents? Where should I file? What is an international patent? And when is the right time to file a patent? And who should I approach? I think by the end of the webinar, we will be able to answer these questions in detail. So intellectual property, as we discussed, is creation of mind. And is IP a business asset? Yes, IP is a business asset. Now, as I said, it's a form of an intangible asset. It can be by way of copyright, can be patents, trademark, design registration. And it's basically when we protect IP, our consumers are able to categorize the business. They can uh, identify your business. You can talk to your consumer when you have a protected IP by way of branding your business. As I said, IP is an intangible asset. Now, what is patents? Patents is right to exclude others from manufacturing or marketing an invention from a limited period. The time period is uh, 20 years from filing your provisional patent petition. And brands are built around patents. And the very good example would be Apple. If you talk about Apple, we have the brand as iPod, iPhone, iPads, then you have iMini. So patent is something for technology. It can be a product or a process. Now coming to trademarks. Trademarks are words, symbols, or devices. And it's protected by law, like you can uh, trademark a name, you can trademark a logo, a tagline, for example, like Trademark identifies and distinguishes a specific product from others in the marketplace. From your competitors, when your consumers are coming to you, it's because of the brand name you have developed. And the brand name which you have developed means protection in law, so that not any third person can start a business next year and say that we associate ourselves with X brand. So you need to file a protection. Trademark identifies the source of provision of goods or services. It helps guarantee the quality of goods bearing the mark. As, as, as I said, a consumer is able to identify your product or service. It creates and maintains a demand for the product. In the case of Apple, since they have built around the brand and built around the patent technologies, when I say Apple, it's definitely it's an iPod, iPhone, iPad, you name it, they do it. And definitely trademark can be used as a marketing tool to build your brand. Now, the amount of protection for trademark depends upon its distinctiveness. Like, if you point a name, like, you can make, you can take a prefix, you can take a suffix, like Kodak. It's like they take those prefix from somewhere, suffix from somewhere, and Definitely, they can be distinctive mark also. It depends from business to business what kind of brand name you want your consumers to associate. And it will be better if you do a market research before launching a brand name because it is the brand name which is going to take you forward because the company will be known by the brand, not by you. Then, coming to copyright. Uh, it's a legal protection to authors for original authorship. What can be copyrighted? It's, it's a very important question for entrepreneurs who are in the uh, software domain, like software codes can be copyrighted, then books can be copyrighted, films and compositions are there. Right of author uh, is safeguarded and uh, copyright, like there's a clear uh, demarcation between copyright and patents. Copyright is not for ideas, procedures, or methods of operation or mathematical concepts as such. As I said, copyright 
is for software code. So you need to understand what kind of IT is being generated in your business. As I said earlier, because until unless you don't understand what kind of IT protection you need, you won't be able to uh, succeed in uh, filing for the right kind of IT. Coming now to patents. Uh, patent term is 20 years from filing and uh, all IP rights are territorial in nature. When I say territorial in nature, it means you have to file in each and every country where your business is. You cannot say, I file in India and I seek protection in the US or the other way around. I file in Japan, I want to seek protection in India. That's not there. You need to file in all the countries, whichever is your business goals are. If you are, say for example, you're, you have a company in Singapore and uh, you are seeking funding there, so definitely you need to protect your IP in Singapore before filing in India. Now let's talk about the patent requirements. Patent requirements, you need to fulfill these pat uh, requirements before a patent is granted by the patent office. That is, it should be new, it should be useful, it should be solving some prior art problem which is already existing in that domain. It should not be obvious to a person skill in the art. When I say a person skill in the art, it means a person of that domain the method should not be something which is already been devised by somebody else earlier. It should be something new. And while writing a patent application, you need to disclose the best method by way by which the patent will work. Scope and life of patents. This is very important. Uh, as an entrepreneur, as a startup, or as any technology company, you need to understand what that patent document talks about. Patent writing is a skillful thing and the scope is defined by patent claim. When we talk about patent claims, that's the heart of the invention. That is what, like, whatever is written in your claims, you will be getting protection on that. So you may need to make sure your patent claims are broad enough that covers everything possible which you can foresee in future your competitors might be doing and filing a patent in the same domain. And once the patent claims are written, it is supported by description and figures in the detailed description part. So when I talk about the scope and for a patent, then what? Then it is published. Then once it is published, we need to file for request for examination. And once it is examined, uh, the examination is uh, office action response which we need to respond. So once the patent is granted, it's not all. You need to file for the renewal fees. If you fail to file for the renewal fees, your patent will lapse and anybody is free to use that without your permission. Now why patent is so important for a technology company? Patent is definitely important to investors because when a technology is developed and a patent is filed. So it's a negative monopoly right which you get to exclude others from performing the same thing without your consent. So you have an upper edge in the market. So that's why even the investors might be interested, like they might be interested in funding a technology company which owns some IP. It, it's definitely a very important asset. Secondly, it excludes the entry of competitors in the same domain. If your patent is granted, no second person in that country per se can work your invention without taking a permission from you or giving you a royalty. Thirdly, it develops investors' confidence that you are really willing yourself to sustain your business. Definitely establish a market credibility because when your brand is developed, you have your own trademarks, so trademark values a lot. And maximum
from another patent holder. In that case, you need to take that license, and you both can grow in uh, in the coming years. Definitely generate the uh, license revenue stream. A very good example would be Skype was uh, taken over by Microsoft. It was the intellectual asset which was valued eight point five billion. So I think. When you talk about IP, if IP is protected and in the long run when acquisition is there, you, you cut a good deal. Now let's talk about the patent myths. Many a times we get clients and they say, okay, patent gives the right to use and practice the claim subject matter. But in reality, when I get a technology and people say it's it's noble, but what's the proof? It might be, because as I uh, we discussed in our earlier slides, uh, patent is given for a uh, new invention, something new which is not existing worldwide. So in reality, there could exist a broader patent. So a patent is not a defense to infringement of prior art. So what would be the strategy in this case is to timely conduct a freedom to operate search. In other terms, we call it a clearance search or right to use search. And you should uh, talk to your patent lawyer who will conduct the search in that particular country and we'll give you the results and if it's, it's uh, a straightforward case you can then go with, uh, working in that technology and you take opinion from a patent lawyer regarding the third party patent guide before commencing manufacture sale use of potentially infringing process or product a good example would be uh, currently there are uh, people are entering into this uh, LED domain so in this case so whenever a new player wants to start a business they are uh, getting their uh, freedom to operate searches conducted because when we talk about LED technologies, LED technologies are, are also of many types. Now, what I want to start manufacturing is of concern because all foreign companies are getting the IP protected in India because India is a big market. So, you need to get your freedom to operate clear in search well in advance if you think you might be infringing of uh, someone's patent. The startup companies, entrepreneurs, they, like when they think like okay, they, they want to file a patent, they'll just search on Google, and what comes? Okay, you, there's a worldwide patent, so they'll ask me the question: uh, Can I file a worldwide patent? I want an international patent. But in reality, there's nothing called as worldwide patent. It must be filed individ uh, individually and separately in each country where protection is sought. As I said. Patent rights are territorial in nature, so I would be discussing uh, in the coming slides about WIPO and PCT, which is a different mechanism altogether, but it is not a granting authority, whereby you can say I have been granted a worldwide patent. So I would, uh, uh, I, I just want to uh, make sure like everybody, uh, like if you are, uh, you know, planning to file a patent, so just clear your basics. There is nothing known as worldwide patent. And secondly, does international patent protection exist? As I said, international patent is something different, but the granting authority is not there. So filing before WIPO is part of IPR strategy, whereby you are increasing the time limit to enter in other countries. When I say time limit to enter in other countries is, if I file a patent application in India today, I have 12 months time to file in other countries, but if I don't have the funds, I would rather go for a PCT application or international application whereby I am buying time from them. So WIPO publishes the patent application, but it is not a granting authority. So as an inventor, I should understand WIPO is not a granting authority, it's just we are buying time from them. I like to explain you this PCT timeline. Uh, PCT stands for Patent Cooperation Treaty, which India is also a member. So, it's say for example, I'll uh, also talk about before starting this. I'll talk about provisional patent application. Like, if I have an idea today, but my idea is uh, theoretical, and I plan like in next 12 months, my idea would be uh, uh, in a workable condition. I'll go for a provisional patent application. So, say for example, you file 
a provisional patent application on zero month that is your priority date and you can as i said earlier you can file your application within 12 months in other countries if you are not able to file the application in uh, 12 months you can file at wipo once you file at wipo that is also has to be filed within 12 months so once it is filed on the uh, 16th month isr uh, and ica is issued isr is an international search report we need to uh, select a searching authority while filing at wipo and it depends like uh, say for example uh, i i would be filing in europe if my technology is of that important so i'll select the uh, authority as epo epo is the uh, european patent office so once we have uh, the isa report and uh, many a times you have uh, objections like claim this is not workable or need to amend this so you can file the amendments but what i wanted to uh, show you in the timeline is like you can enter in other countries in 30 months 30 or 31 months per se a uh, form priority date in other countries now what happens is as i said you're buying time so if you see here it's like you're not filing the application in 12 months but you extended your time period in 30 months so it gives you a good time uh, to raise funds so that you can actually afford the uh, patent attorneys or the lawyers in those countries to prosecute the applications now i'll talk about trademark and brand people can do without patents but you cannot do without uh, trademark and brands whether you are a startup entrepreneur or whether you have a business entity and uh, when people start recognizing you by your brand so it's a source identifier for your goods and services so having the right trademark ensures that the business is marketable and protectable and again as before filing for a trademark or i would rather say uh, from my experience one should before starting the business and coining a name should conduct or get con uh, should contact their lawyers or they can themselves conduct a trademark clearance search to know if a similar a trade name is existing because what happens is we just just name something and we start a business and all our marketing resources and advertisements is done and one fine day we get a legal notice from other party saying that we are infringing their trademark so a trademark clearance search is very important for any business entity and uh, you can also google out the names and uh, see if such kind of name exists trademark can also be granted for the unique domain name so domain name can be also be protected uh, by trademark if i talk about trademark registration in india it's within within 10 to 18 months from the date of filing the trademark application proceeds towards the grant stage and your trademark is registered you get a certificate but in the meantime it might be objected or opposed by any third party so once registered it is valid for 10 years and again there is a process of renewal we need to renew it after every 10 years for the renewals if not filed it will lead to abandonment so you need to make sure if you have protected the ip you pay your renewal fees in time now this is a very interesting i am i would be discussing about what are likely to discuss till now as a consumer if i go to purchase a car and if i say a hyundai car the hyundai itself is a trademark logo that's what the importance of brand is brand is very important from the user's perspective and you should make sure that you protect your brand by filing trademarks and then again uh, many times people say i need design patent in india it's it's the aesthetic look of the design which can be protected under design registration so for say in this case i would rather say the look of the car can be protected under industrial designs and if i talk about the patent maybe for the tires the way the tubeless tires are made 
they might be having a new manufacturing process for which one might file a patent. So as I said, uh, as a business owner, I need to identify my IPs. And once I identify my IPs, I need to file for protection. Now, what are the IT strategies for startup? Now, this is this is a very important question from a startup entrepreneurs, and they have these questions always on their mind. Can I enter the market without infringing IP? Now, this is a tricky question to answer. Can I enter the market? As I said, you need to do your market research well in advance, identify your competition, identify your competitors identify what is the existing competitive technologies in your domain and say for perhaps you have a technology for which you seek protection what impact does your invention will have on the competitors and the other technologies if you are able to differentiate between these two factors I am I'm sure you will succeed in the long run having a successful IP portfolio with you Now, I'm talking about patent scope. You should know your limits of the invention. As I, we discussed earlier, limits are defined in, when you talk about where, where the limits defined, it is defined by the scope of the patent, uh, patent claims. So, how broad claims have been granted by the uh, patent office, what's the scope of the invention, how limited your invention is and what has been granted. So the scope is very important. So what differentiates your invention from known competitive technologies? So when I say what, how it differentiates, if you're able to answer these questions, you understand how you are different from your competitors and why you are succeeding in the long run. When you talk about value propositions, say for example, I start a business venture in India. Now I want to uh, uh, go to foreign market. When I talk about foreign market, who are who are my customers in those markets? So as I said, any IP right is territorial in nature. You need to protect that IP right well in advance in the identified market. Now the question comes: Is IP a business asset? Yes, definitely. IP is a business asset for each and every technology. As a director of a company, as a startup entrepreneur, you need to identify that asset, capture that asset, and protect that asset by way of filing IP rights. Protect your intangible assets because it's going, going to increase your portfolio, it's, it's going to increase your valuation of the portfolio. Now, this is a very interesting question, how to identify IP in your business? If I am able to identify IP in my business, that's a differentiating factor. So, what all is needed? You need to identify the unique points and how you are different from your competitor. If you can map it out, that's where you will know my IP has been generated. My IP can be in terms of copyright, my IP can be in terms of branding, even a single company can own multiple brands if they want to. And if they think that brand might be unique to their business and would be increasing their uh, IP asset. And if, say for example, you're not able to make it out, you know, how you're different from your competitor, you put yourself in his shoes and see what happens if your competitor identifies and knows your unique business selling proposition? I'm very sure after the webinar, if you just sit and you know map these things out, you will identify your IP if you have it till now. So, as I said, identifying your IP is very important. And once you identify your IP, you need to file for protection. What is the key takeover here? If you don't safeguard yourself, no relief will be sought. After you see your competitor or third person infringing your business, that will be too late. You need to take these measurements in advance. 
I'll just give a brief about ourselves. We are TechCorp Legal LLP Law Firm in, based in New Delhi. We are working in uh, two different verticals. That is, one is uh, BioCorp Legal for bio-related services, and the other we have CyberCorp Legal for mobile apps and software-related services. And uh, TechCorp International Consultant is a Singapore-based firm, and you can visit our website at techcorpgroup.com. And our new venture under that is uh, techcorpcapital.com, where ideas, technology, and business intersect. Our bio-related services talks about uh, pharmaceutical, biotechnology, and drug laws. CyberCorp Legal discusses about, and we help entrepreneurs, startup technology companies with uh, protecting the IP rights in mobile applications, social media. And definitely, uh, patent is our forte. So I think uh, after this webinar, these questions must have been answered. Like, I hope, and I'm hopeful that uh, you will be able to identify IP develop in your business. Start valuing your IP. Your ideas and know-how may be some of your most valuable assets. So you need to protect that. And identify IP licensing opportunities in market. Our motto is for today, the takeaway would be protect your IP today before it's too late. And uh, with this, I'll end my presentation. You can get in touch with me at uh, my email ID. You can uh, follow me on Twitter. You can uh, see my uh, About Me page. And uh, I'm hopeful I'll receive some questions now. Over to Chandra. Uh, thank you, Ms. Preeti. Uh, we'll start our uh, QA uh, session. A first question is from okay. uh, Mr. Viren. He asks, uh, suppose I have a product patent uh, in uh, bracket biotech. How do I do the valuation for out licensing? Any specific formulas to be used? See, when we are talking about out licensing, uh, you need to identify the market first. As I said, uh, IP rights are territorial in nature. So once you identify the country, say for example, uh, for biotech, uh, Germany or uh, uh, European uh, countries would be of interest. So you need to uh, see the kind of uh, biotech application you have with you. And uh, you need to map up with the uh, companies which are then in that country. And then you can take things forward from there. Okay, our next question is from Ankit. He asks, should we patent or copyright software code? See, software code per se is copyright and the algorithm uh, which is developed in that software that might be, that can be protected by patents by, you know, uh, we need to see because uh, what kind of software algorithm uh, he might have developed. So if we can uh, add a hardware component to that, definitely uh, both copyright and uh, patent can be filed. Okay. Uh, our next question is from uh, Mr. Ravi. He asks how IPR can contribute in higher education in management studies in India. See, IPR is right now after 2005 when the, the patent act was amended things have changed. Things were not the same in India per se. And I would say if IPR is taught in the right manner, the budding entrepreneur will understand the value of IP. And at the beginning of the businesses, they'll file for the IP and they won't wait like somebody copies their uh, idea and then they realize that they should have filed for the IP. So I think uh, education of IP in colleges, in management, Maybe in, I, I would rather say in colleges also IPR should be a subject whereby practical knowledge is given to them so that they can implement in their daily lives when they are going for a job or they are starting their own venture. Okay, our next question is from uh, Tejeshwi. Uh, he asks, if I am a programmer, how can I copyright my code? See, code word by word can be copyrighted under Copyright Act. There is a provision and you can go to the copyright website and you can see that. 
So the whole code can uh, be filed uh, as a corporate application and will be given a certificate uh, from 15 to 18 months which generally takes to generate the certificate uh, uh, for copyright and the copyright office in India is in New Delhi only. Our next question is from Abridal. Uh, he asks, can we protect business idea or way to do business on an established technology? This is a tricky question. See, per se business ideas are not patentable. But again, uh, if you see the kind of patent applications granted by the patent office in India or across the globe, if you can add a hardware component and as I said, the idea, maybe that business idea if it is not existing till date and you can add a hardware component, you might, subject to terms and conditions, you might file for a, a, a patent application. Okay. Our uh, next uh, question uh, is from Varun. He says, is patent imprisonment law taken in India seriously? Definitely. Definitely taken seriously. If you read the newspapers, like, now and then uh, judgment is coming. It's just that the party who is be he has to take it up seriously with the lawyers. Definitely, uh, it's on the rise. It's not that you're not getting the uh, damages. You are getting the damages nowadays. Okay. Our next question is from uh, Mr. Azad. Uh, he says, "Is it true that if I have talked to uh, investors about my idea or product, I cannot patent it after the interaction?" In other words, should one always patent and then interact with the investors? See, uh, uh, question I'll like to add, uh, like to answer in two parts. One is like when you're talking to an investor for the first time, you are definitely signing some kind of NDA. And as I said, if you think your idea has potential, get a search done or do it yourself and file for a provisional patent application. The government fees is just thousand rupees. Why not, you know, pay that thousand rupees, file for a provisional patent application, and talk to investors? Your IP is secure. Your idea is secure. Nobody can copy like that. Okay. Our next question again uh, from Rudul. Uh, it was actually during um, when you were talking about uh, patent search. He says, uh, "Is it that patent search does not cost us uh, anything?" See, patent search, if you're doing on your, uh, yourself, you're doing the patent search, it doesn't cost you anything. But if you hire the services of a patent lawyer or a patent expert, definitely that's going to cost you. There are particular databases to search, but at the same time, uh, when a search is conducted by an expert, he is looking into many more things, which an inventor or a startup entrepreneur uh, doesn't, uh, uh, because since he doesn't know about those things, he generally uh, doesn't see those things. So say, for example, uh, we take into consideration uh, ITC. ITC is International Patent Classification. So there are many integrities involved in the patent search. If you're doing it on your own, definitely it is free of cost. If you get it done, then it is a costly effect. Okay, next question is from uh, Ruchita. She says, can we market or make business on a patent if it is filed in some other country? Uh, I think I uh, made it clear in the webinar like uh, patent rights are territorial in nature. If you have not uh, filed for a patent in a particular country and you're marketing your service in that country, no uh, protection would be given. So wherever there is protection, there you can you uh, you can enforce your rights. Uh, next question is from uh, Varun. Uh, can we challenge a patent in a way that? If we have thought of, thought about it and first, and we have developed it first, but someone else has filed for the patents. See, uh, you can challenge it by way of patent opposition. You have the particular time period whereby uh, government office gives you time period to file that. And definitely, if, if something has been uh, developed by you and uh, in the stipulated time period, if you approach the patent office, it can be challenged. Our next question is from uh, Parul. Uh, she says, I have developed a mobile application. What type of IP is generated in mobile application domain? Uh, okay. I'll again answer this in two parts. Uh, 
we get a lot of queries uh, because right now everybody is developing mobile apps. So definitely the software code can be protected under copyright law and the algorithm uh, is mobile. Can we, uh, we can file for a patent application. The look feel of the mobile app, the way the mobile app is working, the uh, photograph which uh, the screenshots can be also again can be copyright. So they, they can be multiple copyright for the mobile apps uh, depending upon the technology involved. Okay. Our next question is from Bhavik. Uh, it says, uh, can we patent the process as my idea is process oriented? Yes, process can be patented. Uh, our next question is from uh, Ankit. While copywriting a software code using online method, what all uh, this do we have to upload? The copyright cannot be uploaded online. They are not working online. You need to uh, submit a physical copy. The website is uh, right now, copyright website doesn't, uh, they do not take online applications. You have to submit a uh, physical copy. Okay. Is there something called international trademark? There's an international trademark treaty, there's a matter of treaty by which uh, this India became a part of it. You can file and they take care of your application in multiple countries. Okay, uh, our next question is uh, from Bimal. Says uh, two questions actually he's asking. Number one, bearing in mind a startup with minimal resources, with idea conceived in India, possible manufacturing in China versus selling in US, how should IPR be managed? And the question number two is, okay, okay you can answer, I can ask the question number two afterwards. Can you just uh, repeat the question uh, again? Uh, bearing in mind a startup with minimal resources, with idea conceived in India, possibly manufacturing in China and selling in US. How should IPA be managed? Okay, in that case, uh, you should start the IP process in India. And uh, as I said, uh, if money is of uh, concern in the beginning, uh, you can file for a provisional patent application and you have a window of 12 months to file the complete application. And I think when you are in a business, you can uh, raise the uh, first round or second round of funding in those 12 months and once you have the funds with you, uh, you can file the complete application in India and then file corresponding uh, application in uh, China and US within the stipulated 12 months to take things forward. Okay, uh, our next question is from Ankit. Uh, can you tell something about Madrid protocol and Madrid agreement? See, Madrid protocol and this uh, agreement, uh, again, uh, as we discussed earlier, it's a, it's a method by which uh, you are filing uh, multiple uh, trademarks in uh, uh, the authority takes care of it and you file it in multiple countries. It's a one-stop window, so it uh, simplifies your process. You don't have to go in uh, each particular country to file the application. Okay, uh, the next question is from uh, Reshma says, as an artist, am I allowed to use the C, uh, copyright C sign on my website as I have noticed those from the US have a registration number and some do not. Is it mandatory to register or would I get in trouble for using the C sign without registering my name? See, the beauty of copyright is like the day you created, you can write copyright. The thing why people file for copyright protection is like what happens is where the stakes are high. Say for example, in a film, stakes are very high. So they file for copyright protection, they get the certificate. So in, when they go in court of law, the copyright certificate acts as an evidence. So the day you the day you develop something or as an artist you develop something and you, you using a copyright C, it's absolutely fine. No issue. Uh, our next question is from Amrudul again. What does it mean to file provisional patent application for 1000 rupees 
does it mean a file say x idea but realize in next 12 months that x idea has moved to x and y can i accommodate that in the application after that see when i say you file for provisional patent application thousand rupees is the government fees first thing secondly if your idea is x and next six months is y you can file an application and whatever application details you're filing you have to file it in the 12 months window maybe many times what happens is people are developing ideas on a quarterly basis so they file two or three applications in that window so in the 12 when the 12 months finishes maybe one application is having three priority dates and whatever is being disclosed on particular date will get protection from that particular date itself Okay, now uh, we will take another uh, two questions. Uh, our uh, next question is from uh, Mr. Vimal again. Uh, his question is, is there any government support for SMEs in patent search in various target countries or patent processes? See, government, uh, they definitely provide the uh, patent search engine. If you uh, Google it out, you'll definitely know it. First, they are not giving any funding for conducting a patent search. It is available, you can conduct the searches uh, in those countries or if you look at their respective websites. Okay. Our last question is from uh, Gargi. Uh, she asks, uh, how do I manage IPR for a clothing line, like for the brand name manufacturing process or delivery process? See, one thing is definitely the brand name for which uh, she can file protection and again in clothing line if you have uh, multiple things uh, say for example uh, uh, they can be a particular brand I'll, I'll take an example of Anita Dombre so when I talk about Anita Dombre she has bifurcated her brand like you have and you have global Desi and Anita Dombre per se and definitely she is targeting different segments so you need to segment your business and one business as I earlier said can have multiple brands is the way you do the branding of your business. This is one part. The second part would be if you're talking about the processes, uh, if you can, uh, as we were talking about the competitors, if you can you jot down your points and you can make a book, like this is because of which I'm different from my competitor and these are the processes because of which uh, uh, I'm able to succeed, you can file for a copyright in that case. And if uh, innovation is there or there is a particular technology by which you are uh, uh, manufacturing your clothes uh, then that can in some instances can one can file for patent source. Okay. Here we end our uh, Q&A uh, session. Thank you very much uh, Ms. Priti for that interesting session and uh, thank to all our attendees for participating in the webinar. We are glad that questions kept on coming but Due to lack of time, uh, we are unable to answer all. Uh, please do send in uh, your feedback or suggestions to us at eclub at nnglobal.org. Also, if you found the session interesting, feel free to blog or post about it. The recorded version of the webinar will be available soon on our website eclub.online.org. Uh, join us for our next webinar in the month of June. Uh, Fifth, till then, goodbye and thank you very much for once again.